Quick, name the original superhero, the first to use superhuman strength to fight for truth, justice, and the American way. It might not be the character you think. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. The man of steel. Popeye the Sailor. This is something only Superman can do. Pepper me chest with this. That better be Moida. Yeah, when it's your time. Popeye was the first superhero of cartoons and pop culture comics. You really have to look at him that way. He was the first comic strip character who was stronger than the average man. Uh, he didn't go to a phone booth and take off his clothes, but he was a superhero in his own way. He, he was a superstar also. One can argue that Siegel and Schuster were influenced by Popeye. I don't know, they're not around to ask anymore, but uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised, given once again their ages. If they were 16 when they created Superman in 1938, they would have been six, seven years old when Popeye appeared. Very influential. Superman's pretty good. Well, I can't be as strong as Superman and handsome, too. <laughs> like the entire baby boomer generation of post-World War II, I grew up as the first television generation. And when we turned on TV, there were Popeye cartoons. They were funny. They were really all about the same kind of wish fulfillment we were getting from reading Superman comics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The formula for the Popeye cartoons is not that different from the formula of the Superman cartoons. Instead of pulling out spinach, Clark Kent goes into a stock room and changes his clothes. But essentially, that's what it is. You sit there waiting for the hero to emerge. Is there any spinach in the house? Yeah, there is. Here we are, Popeye! Like the great superhero characters, he has an Achilles heel. You know, like Superman has kryptonite, Popeye needs his spinach. It's a disaster if he doesn't get it. And so the structure of all the cartoons is, okay, he's gotta get his spinach and vanquish the bad guy. It's like watching this iconic scenario play out every time. Although he's fundamentally a comic bruiser, uh, he is also super powered in the way that Superman or Captain Marvel were. In the first story, he has super strength, but he also has an incredible ability to not die, even though he'd be filled with bullets. I don't think people realize today how successful Superman was when he first appeared. He was as big as Star Wars or Harry Potter is today. He started in comic books in 1938 and was an immediate success and was responsible for the growth of the entire comic book industry. And so it was logical with the Fleischer's success having taken Popeye from the comic strips and turned him into a, an animated character, that they would also have success turning Superman into an animated character. <laughs> Super-duper-dream-man. It's quite amusing that at the, roughly the same time as the first Fleischer Superman cartoon appeared, there's a Fleischer Popeye where he momentarily turns into the Man of Steel, a kind of side reference, which I quite enjoyed. Later on in the famous period, there was one called She's Six Sailors where Bluto masquerades as Superman to try to impress Olive Oil, and Popeye becomes a sort of superhero himself to compete with him. I was never happy with that comparison because I felt that Popeye had enough going for him not to need to bother another character's methods. Listen here, stupid man. You still has to prove to me that you're a better man than I am. Popeye comes from that, I suppose, early depression era. That's when the public liked put upon tough guys. I suppose he's he's very much akin to the, you know, the Cagneys and the Bogarts of the time who were tough but urban. He was a hero, you know, and that that was the, the genius of the Fleischer brothers animating him and positioning him as, you know, this strong underdog that would, you know, come to the rescue. I think that's really something, I think even in films today, that draws an audience in and you become compassionate and, and sympathetic towards a character. You know, you see yourself as the underdog and wanting to always stand up for what's right. And that's what Popeye was about, you know? Which made him a hero. I says I ain't gonna harm no bull. I think that the things that I've liked about the character, even to this day, are that it's a character that's an everyman. 
Um, he's a hero, but an unlikely hero. Popeye isn't a character that you would think would be the hero. In fact, he's, he's often a character who will do everything he can to avoid a problem. You know, I think you ought to learn better manners. You know, you doesn't want to grow up to be a great big bully now, does you? Yeah. I think Popeye definitely is a precursor to the superheroes, and I think the time called out, I think people were frustrated by poor economic conditions and the fact that nothing was changing as fast as they wanted it to change. And I think Popeye was a breath of fresh air because Popeye could do what he wanted to do without anybody getting in his way. And there was, I think, a tremendous wish fulfillment um, for audiences in watching Popeye succeed at things. This guy was a hero, he was a superhero. And uh, all the fantasies that a young boy would have about power and beating up the bad guys and it was just great fare for all of us boys in particular. Look, up in the sky! It's an eagle. It's a rocket. It's a meteor.